Uh, right, thank you. Um, I don't think we have any more uh, questions now, uh, unless anybody wants to peep up now. No? Okay. Well, so thank you again, Matty. Um, and we will move on to our next speaker, who is uh, David Lipman, who's going to talk about my open math. Okay. Well, good morning for me. Uh, afternoon for most of you. Uh, so I am David Lippman. I have been teaching for 20 years at uh, Pierce College, which is a two-year college in Lakewood, Washington uh, in the United States. Um, and I started iMathAS about um, 20 years ago, uh, sorry, 15 years ago now. Um, it was one of those things where I was frustrated with the cost and inflexibility of the publisher systems. Um, teaching at a two-year college, we don't have very um, extensive IT departments, nor much flexibility to do things on, on our own. And so most of the existing systems out there were too complex for our IT folks to handle. And so I created iMathAS with the idea that it could be run on a commodity LAMP server with no additional software. Uh, so very simple installation. Uh, as it turns out, even that was too complex for most of the IT folks. And so uh, with some state support, we ended up creating a hosted instance for everyone in our state to use. Uh, and then eventually that evolved into my open math, which is now a hosted installation of the iMathis software um, for anyone who wants to use it. Um, but the software is available and can be installed locally. We do have a number of um, school specific installations out there. Um, so that is possible if you want to do that. Um, the big focus on my most my open math has been around uh, supporting the use of open textbooks. So we are textbooks. Um, the nice thing about having a hosted platform is that uh, with everyone on the same system, when people create questions, they're instantly available for everyone else on the system to use. Uh, likewise, the user community has created a lot of sort of starter courses aligned with open textbooks, so it makes for a very easy start. Again, our, our main audience has been uh, two-year college faculty, which is like freshman and sophomore level uh, students, as well as uh, secondary schools, high schools. Uh, so the content has mostly focused on sort of the arithmetic through calculus levels uh, and there's been a real focus on making it uh, really as friendly as possible for the for the students to use. Um, the system is set up with enough LMS features that it can be used standalone, um, but it also can integrate with an LMS using LTI uh, if you prefer to do such things. Um, so that's the basic gist of it. Um, let me hop into actually showing you a little bit what it's about. So I have two links in the in the Moodle course. One is sort of your typical LTI integration where you integrate a single assessment and then you can get the grade return back into the LMS. And then the second link launches to a full course giving you sort of the experience of using my open math standalone. So I'll just hop in and let's take a look. Um, so I just sort of threw together a demo that would go through a variety of question types. Um, and that just to give you some sort of idea how it works. So this is sort of a boring question, just a standard numeric question, uh, but shows sort of the dynamic graphing um, capabilities. It is set up with all your standard features. Okay, so it's got your algorithmically generated questions, your auto grading of you know, numeric graphical and algebraic answers um, and you know, dynamically generated graphs and things. So like in a typical homework, if a student misses a problem, you give them a couple tries, show them the answer. And then if they want to try a new version of the problem, you know, they can generate a new version of the problem for additional practice. Anyway, so basic numeric question, um, you know, like an answer that would have sort of a fractional answer. Um, so we do have sort of your math quill you know, nice friendly equation editor entry here uh, to help the students put in their answers. Um, a lot of the community created content has linked in things like videos in with the questions. 
um, so that students have access to, I don't know if that came up in the screen share, but um, have access to video resources as well if they need help. Um, you know, so here you got sure your standard algebraic an answer entry questions. So students are putting in any algebraic um, answer that would be reasonable. Let me see if I can actually get one right. I'm not very good at getting things right while doing demos, but we'll see. And it gives them some warnings if they do silly things. Yeah, I got one right. Uh, and um, yeah, this is system of equations question, complex numbers, um, matrix answers, um, either interval notation inequality type questions or actual inequality notation inequality questions, as well as things like, you know, graphing on a number line so you can graph uh, uh, you know, solution intervals, um, multiple choice questions, including things like and, and 3D graphing, basic 3D graphing capabilities. Um, one of the things I'm most happy about is we do have some sort of graphing entry questions. So it is possible for students to ask students like graph an equation. Uh, and for basic equation types, um, you're not seeing all of them here. This is extendable. You can also do, you know, cubics and, and well, sorry, basic cubics and, F, and um, sine and cosine and exponentials and logs and things like that. So for basic equation types, you have this sort of two point entry type where you just plot two points on the graph and it, and it draws the curve um, so that they can uh, easily enter a graphical answer, uh, which is kind of nice. Um, you know, of course, things like multiple answer questions. There's also some in the question writing language, we have a lot of uh, sort of functions, macros for doing things that come up in math. So we have a lot of statistical functions. And because we teach this sort of math for liberal arts majors class that includes some graph theory, we even have some graph theory macros. So this is a dynamically generated um, graph. Um, there's just a function that generated it. Uh, and of course, like multi-part questions where you answer a bunch of steps in a question, in this case, a sort of hypothesis test question from statistics. Um, this one is, is we have sort of your standard questions have like one answer, right? And, and you score that answer and um, in order to make it as easy as possible for question writers, you know, usually just say here's the answer and, and that makes your life easy. Um, this question is one where it's sort of has a custom evaluator where it's determining, it's having to actually look at the student's answer and compare it to some parameters to decide if it, if it uh, meets the conditions, right? So like any graph that has a positive slope and a negative y-intercept. Um, so this one, uh, we, we don't have what Maddie was just talking about with the, with the actual branching, uh, but we do have sort of the, the step-by-step -step questions, um, right? So the, where uh, the, you can see it's broken down into three parts here. So the idea is that, you know, sometimes you don't want students to see the answer to the Sorry, see the second part until the first part's answered. So they have to answer the first part correctly before the next part shows, and then they can walk through the, the parts or steps of the, of the, of the question. Um, and there's also capability for things like essay answers and file upload questions. Uh, so if you wanna actually collect students like written work on things, you can do that. There's even capability to just add a attach work button to the questions where students can, you know, answer the question using the auto graders, but also attach work to the question uh, so that you can manually grade it. That's come in very handy in the last couple months as we've been stuck at home, uh, being able to grade students uh, work on, on exams. Um, and then these last two examples are just some integration style examples. This one is a GeoGebra applet uh, that is integrated into the question and uh, we get the results back or the, the interactions back and we can actually score them in the question. Um, and then this last one is a little JSX graph 
a widget that again we are reading back the results on uh, so that we can so that we can score it. Yeah, and so that's kind of the question types and, and sort of general interface of the system. Uh, and that's what it looks like um, to hop in. Let me hop into the other one. So if you hop into the other one, again, you'll see sort of the, the um, standalone interface. Um, uh, when you look at it, you're going to see it sort of from the student view. Um, so you'll see that we, you know, we have content items, text items, uh, folders, um, links, web links out to content. Um, so we can use, like I use this standalone in my online classes to deliver my entire class. So I have my links to the textbook material, I've got video lessons for the students to do, and then I've got the homework assignments for them to work on. I've got quizzes and, and things like that as well. Um, yeah, that's a general gist of the system. Um, there are a few other features I'll mention. Uh, first is, the example I showed earlier was sort of what we call a homework style assessment where uh, if a student misses a question, they can ask for a new version on a per question basis. We also have a quiz style assessment uh, where the student works through the quiz and then, um, you know, when they're done with the whole thing, they'll hit submit. And then if they're not happy with their score, they can, re well, if you give them the option to, they can retake the whole quiz and then you can you know, keep the best score on all the retakes, things like that. Um, and there are some other weird ones like what we call video cued assessments. And so this is where <coughs> you have taken a video, sort of a longer video and uh, I think it's playing, yeah. There's no, no movement yet. And then at certain points inside the video, you, you set up triggers where it will stop the video and and it pops up a question uh, and then you the student can answer the question and then depending upon whether they're right or wrong they can you know continue in the video um, it's kind of like those ed puzzle style websites where you can in integrate videos sorry integrate questions in with the video it just gives you the ability to use any my open math question in with your video so I can intersperse multiple videos. This is kind of nice for, um, I found this particularly nice for doing like interactive lecture sort of stuff where like if you were in class, you would pause and say, hey, what do you think about or give this question a try. Um, so I can basically ask that in my video and then actually pop up the question for them to try and then follow it up with the answer and it encourages a little bit of interaction with the, uh, with the video lecture. Um, the system also has what we call a live poll system, which is kind of like a Cahoots or Socrative. Um, so it's a, a WebSocket based system where the students are on their phones or on their laptops. And when I open a question, it pops up on their system. They answer the questions and the results tally on my system live uh, so that we can talk about it in class. Um, that one's not easy to demo, so I'm not going to show you that. Uh, and. Uh, yeah, that's about it. And again, on the uh, instructor side, um, full range of, of sort of building capabilities. Um, like I said, there is a ton of uh, user created content. Um, so we have question libraries that are categorized by, by topic. So for example, you could pop into calculus, integrals, um, like integration rules, substitution, and um, list those questions and we've got a you know a fair number of questions involving uh, integration uh, and then uh, like I mentioned also we have a ton of um, sort of shared courses again this is all community created content um, so for example at the calculus level we have uh, various what we call template courses, usually aligned with some sort of open textbook like the OpenStax textbook. Um, and that usually contains um, like homework for every section of the book already, well, this one doesn't look like it does, but uh, usually homework for every section of the book already put together. Um, what we were really going for is, uh, you know, 
our faculty are used to the publishers, at least here in the States, that come around and, and basically give you teachers everything, a whole package ready to go. And particularly for our part-time faculty, the idea of having to build something themselves is not very appealing. And so in order to convince them to use open resources, we kind of need to make it as easy as the publishers to use open resources. Um, so uh, you know, a teacher can come in and if they want to use the, you know, an OpenStax pre-calculus book, um, they can find a course on here and basically be ready to go in five minutes instead of having to spend, you know, hours and hours assemble, even assembling assignments, let alone writing their own questions or anything like that. Um, but yeah, I think I'll stop there and, and uh, see if there are any questions. Great. Uh, thank you, David. Um, we do have a couple of questions. Um, first of all, uh, Colin Steele is asking about um, what forms of answer you accept. He says, uh, you entered the quadratic in the complete the square form. Right. You were answering a quadratic back at some point. Uh, can the software distinguish between the same polynomial in different forms? For example, either complete the square coefficient form. Right. Um, yeah, except one more. So, so by default, the system will accept anything that's algebraically equivalent. Um, if you want to force a cer certain form, there are ways to force certain form, uh, usually using sort of stupid hacky string matching techniques. Uh, but uh, down the road, I'm hoping to add some more, some more clever approaches. But yes, there are plenty of questions that force a certain form by using some sort of uh, checking the answer for certain format. So okay. That is possible. Uh, how are you determining algebraic equivalence? Comparing uh, evaluated tables of values. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so, so your standard non-computer algebra system approach. So there is no computer algebra system behind the software. Uh, so it's taking more of a web work style approach than a, than a stack approach from my understanding. Uh, in, yeah, so no computer algebra system in the background. Again, my goal was to make this as easy as possible to install and run. Uh, so this is literally, you can pop this on a, you know, $5 commodity web server, LAMP web server and run it and it works just fine. Lovely. Um, we had one question which appeared and then disappeared, I think, because maybe you showed something. Um, but the question was about, um, are people writing material for, um, it was called upper division course, I, I guess later in the degree course. So, so there is, um, so there, there is content in, for, let me see if I can hop in here. So pretty much the highest level I've seen much of is, you know, we got like linear algebra and differential equations. Um, once you get past that, we don't have much. There is little smatterings here and there. Um, uh, oddly, we also have physics and chemistry and accounting of all things. Uh, but uh, the um, yeah, but not not uh, not anything much higher in the math yet. Uh, at least not on my open math. Uh, it could be that some. Again, mostly our audience has been lower division two-year colleges. So there has just hasn't been much effort put in at that level. Um, I think our main university users, like four-year university users, has actually been Ingo, uh, Ingo Dunn. And so maybe they've done some stuff um, at Co University of Koblenz. But um, yeah, I don't think there's much in the way of higher than differential equations. OK, um, so I'll follow up and say, uh, what. Do you cover much at the lower end? Have you had much demand um, for use in high schools? We, um, yes, uh, high school use has picked up quite a bit. Uh, again, the I am a two year college faculty, so that's where you know, most of like my promotional efforts la la laid, um, you know, going to the, those conferences. But, uh, but the two year, sorry, the high school folks have started uh, discovering it and I would say, oh, I can't estimate off the top of my head, but a good portion of our, our use on my open math is now high school users. Um, just for reference, we have about 100,000 students a term using the my open math server. Um, 
Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, a lot of high school it, because because community college we teach a lot of or at least we used to teach a lot of pre college developmental remedial classes. Uh, we had a lot of content all the way down to sort of arithmetic level. Um, so it was you know fairly easy for high school folks to come in and and uh, start using it. Great. Um, and I have one question for you. Um, so what are your plans for the future? What are you wanting to implement next? Oh, um, well, so the immediate roadmap, as in the, what I'm working on this summer, is uh, getting LTI 1.3 working. Uh, after that, um, the totally blanking. Uh, sorry. Um, <laughs> I, I'm trying to think of things that you would actually care about because unfortunately there's a lot of things that I've, I've been having to work on that are not very exciting. Uh, <laughs> it, it's worth mentioning these things because a lot of the yeah. of running these kinds of systems is stuff that's not great new pedagogy. It's yeah. I mean, one, one of the things we're going to be working on is revamping the question searching interface because it's kind of ugly. Um, we're going to be working on a way to do uh, embedding of single questions in other platforms more easily. We can already do last spring. Um, I spent six months and revamped the entire assessment front end, um, the assessment UI. And so we have still have the ability to embed individual questions, but only using the old UI. So we need to update that to work with the new UI. Um, let's see. Uh, we're going to be working on sort of a minimal adaptive thing. Uh, right now you can um, like require one assessment to be completed before another one opens. Uh, but what we want to do is have it so that if you do really well on a like a preliminary assessment, it can eliminate the need to do some subsequent assessments uh, so that we can do sort of a mild adaptive um, sort of thing. Um, there needs to be some work around, uh, or we'd like to get do some grouping where you can force the questions to be answered in order. Um, that's something that uh, we had something like it in the old interface, but it just didn't make sense in the new one. So we need to figure out some way to make that work in a reasonable way. And then adding some, some extension abilities, like ability to do time limit extensions and retake extensions and things like that. Um, and various question language improvements and question. We, I'd really like to get some new chemistry question types and a uh, answer with units question type for the physics folks. Um, they've been wanting that. Great, well, thank you. Um, so thank you, David, for that talk. And uh, thank you, Matty, again, for your talk. 